welcome back to my channel now if you wonder why i'm wearing the same jumper the same outfit as my last video and i look a bit disheveled it's because it's the same day it's still the 6th of january but i've posted that video but i'm on to the next stage and i need to like basically tell you about this so it's all about the toaster sweater right so as you know recently i made the version two of the toaster sweater and that's not why i bought this pattern i bought it because i wanted to make version one but when i bought some fabric to make the hoods and pants that wasn't suitable it screamed version two so i ended up making version two but i still desperately wanted to make version one and i won some fabric from by graziella fabrics and it's really quite a bold print it's really like out there with this loud print and it's directional as well so I had plan A which was to try and get the whole jumper out of the fabric or one which was a meter which it wasn't looking likely um, but somebody said they got the small size out of a meter. Uh, plan B was to match it up with the fabrics I've got. Now two people that watched my video said that they thought that the um, pink glitter fabric I had that I was wearing looked good with it and I actually, I actually agreed with them because when I looked at the video I thought yes that looks very good together and the and um basically option c was to purchase more fabric that coordinates which obviously is not a very easy thing to do right now because you can't physically go to shops so it's very tricky isn't it well disaster is struck hasn't it basically I've cut out my sleeve and I've cut out my front bodice and back bodice and there's no way i'm going to get the waistband out of it like if you look at it this is the waistband piece it just not a chance i'm just not going to get it out of it and i can't see any point now of cutting out the neck or two cuts because my, I think if I want to do a coordinating fabric for this, I think I'd like those to match. I think I'd like the bodice, front and back and sleeves to be the same. And then to have a contrasting neck, cuffs and waistband all matching. But so I thought, right, let's have a look at my fabrics. Now I had a look at the first pink I looked at thought no that just doesn't look right and I'd already come to that conclusion in the previous video hadn't I and uh, I matched up the like I don't even know if I've got enough of that pink glitter fabric I didn't really lay it out but when I got it next to the fabric I won it, it looked horrendous it really looked horrendous it basically made the the pink fabric next to this made it look like the colour out of this had ran into the leaf prints that's how it appeared and uh, so it nothing goes so basically i've got all excited i've traced out my toaster sweater this evening i've um cut all the pieces out i've cut out the bodices cut out the sleeves and I'm stuck. I'm just stuck. I've got, I can't do it. So the only option is, is to buy fabric. Um, but it's colour. Like I could buy the same fabric. But I kind of think it's such a busy print. I think I would prefer something plain around the neck. And then the plain other bits, if I could be perfectly honest, rather than going full out the whole jumper kind of thing so yeah i just don't know what to do really i'm going to get my thinking cap on and see if i can come up with anything well actually while i'm sitting here an idea has sprung to mind but if i do this i don't think i'll be able to get the other bits out of it i was just looking at the back of the fabric i was thinking if i cut the waistband on the diagonal which i did consider doing anyway with the leaf print even though i wasn't very fond of that idea but i don't think then i can get the other pieces out of it so i don't know what's going to happen so i'm going to uh, 
stop this bit of video now but obviously don't go anywhere because this is just the first part of my next vlog that I'm doing so hold tight and I'll see you maybe when I've figured something out bye I'm back and it's now Friday the 8th of January. Uh, the only little bit of footage I did yesterday was um, a little bit of bathroom progress from my husband, he finished the tiling and a little bit of, uh, I'll show you the frost. We did uh, later on get snow so and we've woken up to a nice dusting of snow but it's virtually disappeared again so we haven't got out on the sledges yet. But you may have noticed I'm wearing something rather bright that's given me a lot of drama yes i've done it <laughs> and i'll let you know exactly what i've done and i have got it out of the meter and it's i've had to do some crazy things to get it out of the meter but i actually did it um and you will as you'll know probably from my previous clip that this is what i've been making the soho 7 version 1 and i've worn a meter with this fabric um, from and it was basically uh, an Instagrammer um, that was I was tagged in it um, I think it was Becky um, notes from the sewing room that um, tagged me in it and uh, and the Instagrammer do you know what I can never remember her Instagram name top of my head but I'll put that up on the screen for you to see and it's something to do with I seem or something a lot maybe I don't, I don't know but um something along those lines but it will have come up on the screen and the fabric came directly from by graziella fabrics uh, if i'm pronouncing that right and i've won one meter now this jumper uh, cut for the small size oh, the extra small size um i made uh, it calls for how much one meter point six yeah one point six meter uh, in american sizing that's one uh, one yard one and three quarter yards of fabric right and obviously when you've got a directional print as well that can often actually increase well how i've done it i don't know how much you can notice it uh, i cut out the back bodice the front bodice and the sleeves first then i realized i didn't have um enough width to get the waistband out of it um and then i thought about doing it on the diagonal which i wasn't overly keen on but that i wasn't sure if i was going to get then the cuffs and the neck out of it well this is what i did i prioritized the waistband first and i did cut it on the diagonal so you might be able to see here the leaves going like this uh then obviously i had to get the cuffs and the neck out now the i would have liked then the cuffs to be diagonal um but i couldn't do it so basically i had to cut the cuff straight and then i and then i all i was able to do then was cut the neck diagonal so what i've tried to do so there isn't any crazy looking things i've made the all the bodice the leaves going up i've made the cuffs the leaves go down to look a little bit different. I've made the leaves go diagonal here and I've made the leaves go diagonal here. Now, if you can see, the leaves on the neck go diagonal and up and the leaves on the waistband go di diagonal and down. I actually wanted those to go diagonal and up as well to match the neck. But uh, the way these leaves sat quite central looked better than the other side. It was the, the placement was not going to look quite as good on the other side as it has on this side. But do you know what? I absolutely love this jumper. Now, my husband, he has seen this kind of in the making. He hasn't been in here while I've been making it. I've made it basically on my overlocker. Um, but there was some top stitching involved, which I did on my cover stitch machine, which is still in the kitchen. So he's seen me going in and out and things. And uh, he's seen it and he said, what are you making there? And I said, I'm making a jumper. And he did say, what are you sure? <laughs> he says, it doesn't really look like a jumper kind of fabric. He said, it looks more like 
what you'd make a cushion with and I said I assure you it's sweatshirt fabric and lots of people have used it to make you know this kind of thing like sweater cardigans and things so don't worry don't worry and I've, I've actually showed him because on the by Graziella website um they've got a picture of it made up in a hoodie on a little girl um so and I think he kind of warmed to it a little bit now my experience with my cut this is back, going back to my cover stitch machine which if you've been watching my videos you know I haven't had it very long now I had to change the threads to pink um I only was going to be using two needles so I took the left hand needle out and I left the two in the, on the right the middle one and the one on the right I unclipped the top thread so I left the looper thread in white because obviously it was the looper you wasn't going to see it and I threaded my pink threads up and there were Gutterman threads that I used, not like overlocking threads or anything. And there were brand new ones, both the same. And um, and basically, I top stitched with it um, one needle either side of here. I don't know if you can really see that. It's a pale pink thread, so it is a contrasting thread. And it does show up, so I've done it down the raglan pieces here and here and on the back. Now, the first one I stitched down, um, it didn't look good at all. Um, I'd got um, a few um, skip stitches, which obviously I wasn't getting before when um, it was already threaded up when it arrived with the white overlocker threads. So I stitch over it again, but the um, the ones that had done the loopy stitch they still looked bad and then I hadn't stayed exactly on the line and I really wasn't happy so yesterday evening when I was sitting watching the television with my husband it was a double bill of um, Emmerdale so I did it through that I unpicked basically it was four rows of stitching and there were cover stitch and I've obviously not had to do that before and it was quite a task because I have a certain way of unpicking stitches and obviously I'm a bit new to cover stitching and it, I was in a right mess with it but I knew I would feel a lot happier but obviously I had to figure out why I was getting skip stitches and I found out why what was happening I don't know if it's because the spools were quite new but they were get, getting a bit tight when they were feeding off the back of the cover stitch machine they were getting a bit taut so what I did this time is I would stitch a few stitches and I would just tease them off a little bit at the back just to make sure they were loose I'd do a bit more and I'd check again and once I'd done like a bit I wasn't having to really worry well what it was I kept stopping and checking but everything was looking okay but I just to be on the air of caution because I didn't want to have to unpick cover stitches again I just kept on checking that the tension so it was just because the tension was getting too tight on the threads was making me get skip stitches and I didn't get any more skip stitches so I'm kind of glad that's happened because sometimes things go wrong is what helps you learn so yeah I'm really I'm really very pleased and I can understand you know tension it, it is a massive deal with a lot of things with knitting and crochet and things so of course it's going to be a big thing with sewing isn't it so so anyway I really hope you've liked seeing my toaster sweater version one like the last time I was in film was it was on the, the evening of the 6th of January and I looked at bit aspirated because I've, I've um, started to piece the movie together so I've looked at it and I think oh gosh I look a bit dishevelled and aspirated so I hope you're glad to see me looking a bit more cheerful and actually in my jumper so I'm really pleased obviously I didn't know when I cut out my waistband I really at that point I didn't know if I was going to get all of the jumper out of it and I, I literally just really just about got this jumper out of it um you know but if um so it's good to know that you could with an extra small size you can get it out of the middle but who's to say it depends on the width of this fabric I don't I can't remember what the width of this fabric was I'd have to look on the website actually um I'll put in the, the some of the pictures actually off uh, by Graziella website actually um for you to see in this video um yes yeah, so uh what was I going to say about it 
I've lost my train of thought now before I said that. So yeah, so oh yeah, I don't I don't know what the width is, but uh, on the website it would have the width of the fabric, and I don't, I don't know if it was a tad over a meter because I I folded it in half roughly and I put it against the cutting mat that goes that way. Because this one I've got one here and I have that on the inches side. It's one inch to thirty six inches, uh, and then going that way it's one inches to 24 inches and then the smaller one my original smaller mat um the longer side is one centimeter to 57 centimeters i'm not sure what it goes this side actually uh oh it's is it, is it, oh, it goes to 43 centimeters in an ideal world i'd like um a cutting mat that fills the whole table really that would be the better thing but i tend to put things on top of the centimetre map, but it's handy if I want to quickly measure something in centimetres. So, is there anything I want to say about this jumper? Do you know what? I'm really pleased with it. I feel really cosy. Um, my husband hasn't seen it yet. I've literally just um, made it. I've not pressed it or anything. I just get so excited. I've run upstairs. I've taken photos. I don't. So I I haven't mentioned the photographs, have I? So um, I haven't looked at the photographs again yet. I've took the photographs and then dash down here so I'll insert the photographs I've taken I've taken quite a few this time um because obviously I've won this fabric and obviously I want to you know um show it quite well because obviously I want to um thank the you know the people that um sent me the fabric for free um you know in the com Instagram competition that I won which is really nice isn't it so I hope you like seeing it and um I'm off now to go and show my husband um, a jumper and see what he thinks of it actually and see if I get the thumbs up so uh, I don't know if uh, what I'll do is I'll say goodbye now I think I'm going to say my goodbyes um, I will upload this video um, if there's anything worth showing you down in the garden room what he's been doing today I'll put that in but if not um, I'll see you next time um, I, I'm going to tell you what, what am I going to do next um, I haven't totally decided on the next clothes make yet. I've kind of got an idea, but I don't know whether just to take a teeny break now from clothes making because my last two things have been garments, my pants and this and I have all my pants actually and they are rather comfortable they're in the wash now in the washing basket but yes I do love them actually I knew that I would and uh, yeah they look okay and uh, what am I going to do I think I'm going to do something non-clothes making now maybe a bit of free motion embroidery or something so please forgive me dressmakers but um i do like doing other things other than uh, dressmaking so um yeah i'm gonna do a little bit of something else stitchy so uh really nice to chat with you all again i hope you're managing to get through january fairly well we're in um, lockdown all over the uk uh, lockdown three they're calling it I suppose the difference it's made to us really you can't walk into a physical shop unless it's a food shop or something but and it's all back to click and collect but I actually haven't been anywhere other than the co-op um since this has happened anyway so <laughs> it's not making all that much of a difference to me really other than obviously I'm not going ice skating for like most of this year that that's really you know had a big effect and I wasn't going to the gym a great deal but I was going sometimes, obviously. But when the gyms reopened again, I didn't go once. I think it's because um, I was doing Vlogmas. So I was that busy with Vlogmas and everything. I didn't get to the gym. But I have done one bit of exercise. I'm feeling very proud because we have got an exercise bike. I've only ever used it once before. So I've been on the exercise bike. And I remember now why I don't go on it. Because... I don't know if there's something faulty with it, but I was on this bike on the on a not like a flat setting. It wasn't like a hilly thing. Um, I had it on level one, and after four minutes, I was absolutely exhausted. And surely I'm not that unfit. You know, I, ha I know I haven't done a lot of um, skating and things this year, but I, I think I'm fairly a fit kind of person. <laughs> but 
four minutes I was thinking I need to go. I pushed myself to stay on it for 10 minutes. Now that is ridiculous, isn't it? I know I've been on um, the bike at the gym and, I'm, and I've been like, I'll be on level one and I'll work up and I've been on there just for like maybe a few minutes workout before I go to like Pilates or yoga or something. And, uh, and it's just a breeze. And I just couldn't believe after four minutes I was dying on this bike. So it's either the bike, the one, le level one is very tough, there's something faulty or I'm very unfit. Either... One of those th three things I do not know, but I feel quite proud that I did a little bit of exercise yesterday and, and I did a few stretches. But I've, what I've decided to do is I wash my hair twice a week. So I've washed my hair today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do 10 minutes on the bike the day before hair wash day. So, uh, you know, if I get a bit hot and bothered and stuff, Lisa, I know the next day I'm going to be washing my hair or something. So, uh, so that's like tw tw 10 minutes twice a week. I know it's not a lot, is it? But, you know, it's something, isn't it? Until everything goes back to normal, you know. So anyway, I am going to go this time. Um, there might be something at the end of this. I don't know, but uh, it's lovely chatting with you and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>
obviously because he's into computers he knows what he's looking for but he could he couldn't really afford what he wanted brand new so we knew we'd have to get it second hand anyway so obviously once obviously fingers crossed he gets the money back he'll still be on the hunt for a second hand one but um it's a shame because the day after he, he was had the money taken off him and never got the computer one came up locally it was a hundred pound more um but yeah it's, it's such a shame isn't it but fingers crossed you'll get the rest of the money but and thank goodness he's had a hundred pound back that's amazing isn't it so that's really good news anyway i'm sorry to babble on again and I'm, i am going to go this time i'm gonna i think i'm gonna have a move of things around because um my um my machine that i do a uh, machine not free motion embroidery i do my free motion embroidery on my standard sewing machine that i use all the time uh i have a separate machine that i do machine embroidery on it's a second hand machine that i bought from a friend and uh it's kind of like when i want to use it i have to get it out on here then obviously this desk is unusable and um, because i've um freed up a well i say i freed up i freed up a desk of a machine over there but i've put a load of stuff on it i'm going to try and get it set up so i can do uh, a bit more regular um, embroidery on it because I just want to try and make a bit more use out of it. It seems a shame, really. I only use it every now and then just to put a name on something and things. So, yeah, I want to try and get, do a bit more with it, really. I've had it a, a number of years now and and it doesn't it only comes out every now and then i did use it in december i embroidered my name onto um my p uh pajama bag didn't i so that was nice you know if you're not in the mood for doing all free motion or applicating things it can be handy just to have the machine do it for you can't it so anyway i am going to go this time i'm going on again so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye